Namaste, namaste. How's it going? Hatha Yoga provides a number of techniques for channeling the energy. We harness from the asana and pranayama to the brain. We call these techniques mudras. Mudras are ways of channeling the energy from the body to the brain. Good. And you probably um, have heard about hand gestures or hand seals. We call them mudras as well. But Hatha Yoga method of channeling the energy is quite intense. More potent and powerful than the hand gestures. Yes, the seals are helpful in sealing the energy, the, um, the hand ones, but um, Hatha Yoga techniques involve really you know, some you know, nerve and channels and internal mechanism to perform the bandhas, the tongue, the eyes, yeah, and also the internal mechanism. All right, now I will be uh, discussing just a few of them, yeah, three or four. Yeah, from uh, the basic one yeah, to yeah, a more advanced technique. Now, the first basic mudra of Hatha Yoga, which is doable for everyone, yeah, is what we call the Nabhu Mudra. Okay. Nabhu Mudra, when you do it consciously, is actually basic. But Nabhu Mudra, when it happens spontaneously during meditation, is actually advanced. Yeah, so yeah, Hatha Yoga, there, there is a way of learning them consciously, but they happen as well spontaneously. All right, and the spontaneous occurrences of these mudras are uh, involuntary. You can't control them. They just happen once the body and the mind are absorbed by you know, the energetic forces. All right, conscious method of the Nabhu Mudra being the surface of the tongue lightly uh, seals the heart palate, and then you create a gentle suction. And then you inhale through your nose, you know, using the Ujjayi breath or your natural rhythm. You inhaling while the tongue is uh, sealing and then <laughs> pulling them back. You can lightly lift your optic muscles between the eyebrows, whether inter or external or internal. That's another <laughs> um, mudra actually. Uh, you can retain the breath you know, for eight seconds, one just as long as you can. And an exhale through the nose. Good. That mudra could be uh, performed in conjunction with another mudra, which is uh, the Shambhavi mudra. Shambhavi mudra uh, can be applied um, in two ways. Yeah. First would be the external one, when your eyes are lightly uh, passively you know, gazing here, where your eyebrows meet. You can perform the Nabu Mudra as well. They can happen together. Or you can also practice the internal or the Antar Shambhavi Mudra where your eyes are closed, but you are magnetizing your optic nerves between the eyebrows. For some people, the Antar or the internal one is more difficult because the, the mental thoughts get in the way. Yeah, so find your, I say, preference. Find your nature. I find the close one easy for me, actually, yeah, than the open one. Okay, now, those two mudras can be combined together. Yeah, they are general in nature. Okay, of course, you don't, uh, for example, you've tried the Shambhavi mudra and then uh, it causes discomfort or strain in the eyes, don't do that. Just do the Nabu mudra. But they, the, the two mudras really work together in conjunction with, of course, your pranayama, Ushai pranayama. All right, now, next. Yeah. The third mudra I'd like to talk about is what we call the Viparita Karani Mudra. Viparita Karani Mudra is actually an asana, yeah, slash mudra. Okay, um, let me just widen yeah, the camera. So I've given a tutorial about this, um, actually. Uh, it's where we... Um, <laughs> lift our hips up in the air, and then we form this um, angle, not perfectly um, straight, so the spine is curved about 45 degrees, yeah, or 60 degrees, and then the legs are up in the air. And then he, I've given a detailed tutorial of this as well, so you might want to look at that, so you can appreciate the technique. Yeah, in here, while in Viparita Karani, you can perform the following. You can perform the Nabhu Mudra, yeah, the Shambhavi Mudra, whether internal or external, and the Ujjayi Pranayama. Okay, so now, 
<laughs> we can combine yeah, those various mudras already. Okay, so the Nava Mudra can be practiced together with the Shambhavi Mudra. The Viparita Karani Mudra can be practiced together with the Nabhu Mudra, the Ujjayi, as well as the Shambhavi Mudra. Okay, now, the fourth mudra I'd like to talk about, um, which involves both the tongue, the eyes, as well as um, your internal bandhas. Yeah, that's what we call the Keshari mudra. All right, before Keshari mudra, yeah, another set of mudra bandha. Uh, could be practiced as well. Yeah, you have the mula bandha. Mula bandha in a conscious effort yeah, is the contraction of your perineum, your anal genital region. Yeah, the Ajvini mudra is also a, a name um, we use to refer to the mula bandha. Right. Again, yeah, mula bandha on a conscious method is you consciously yeah, close the anal, anal genital region, but in the application, in a more subtle sense, you don't do that. Yeah, when the bandhas are open within you, yeah, they're very subtle. They're very subtle actually. They they just occur spontaneously, depending on the technique. If I do my pranayama, I don't contract anything, but I could feel the bandhas working within me. Yeah, so again, I'd like to emphasize that mudras and bandhas, although they are there are conscious ways or techniques to learn them. They could also happen spontaneously, involuntarily. You don't have control of the involuntary, I say, manifestations of these techniques when it happened during deep meditative state. Now, personally, when I am uh, experiencing, for example, uh, samadhi, they just happen. I just would resurface and my tongue is already there. Yes, sealed against my heart palate. Yeah. My eyes would just involuntarily be yeah, I mean, while while it's happening, I could feel my eyes inside the brain moving, yeah, uh, uh magnetizing, yeah, but I'm not doing it consciously. I could feel my whole body is tense and then really I say uh, still and steady. That even if I move, no, I'm not able to move. The nerves control them. Yeah, so those are like the internal mechanisms. All right, speaking or going back to the conscious method. All right, Mula Bandha is another one, or the Ashvidi Mudra, where you can track the inner genital region. You can either apply that during your uh, practice of pranayama, or you can do it separately, like contract for one second and relax, contract, relax, contract, relax, or you can hold it and then stay there as long as the muscles can withstand the contraction and just breathing normally. All right. Another mudra slash bandha is the uddiyana bandha. All right. Uddiyana bandha is the hollowing of the abdomen cavity, like exhaling. And as you inhale, just a mock inhalation, like the, the abdomen walls flatten and then all the organs inside get in the way or uh, move out of yeah, the, the, the space there, goes to the side, and then you're going to feel and then form this hollow vacuum internally in the core region. It's... Um, um, uh, Udiyana Bandha done in a conscious effort. But in a more organic sense, Udiyana Bandha is just breathing through it you know, without you doing any physical manipulation externally. But inside you can feel them. All right. Another Bandha slash Mudra is the Jalandhara. All right. Jalandhara Bandha is the hollowing of the throat, so the nodding of the head you know, to the chest, and then lifting of the sternum up. And then this is... Um, done uh, in conjunction with the inhalation. Yeah, the Jalandhara Bandha is commonly associated with the inhalation. And then you hold it. And then when the Jalandhara Bandha is active, yeah, the other Bandhas spontaneously activate as well in varying intensity. So my goal is just to give you yeah, a recap or a summary of the Bandhas because um, again, when we read and and, and and study text. Yeah, it's quite straightforward, Hatha Yoga, but there are deep essence, meaning in between the lines. Yeah, and then when we practice them, we will be discovering yeah, all of this yeah, deeper um, realization and meaning and yeah, internal techniques, yeah, subtle techniques attached to them. Okay, now I've given what? Uh, 
I've given the Nabu Mudra, the Shambhavi Mudra, the Vivarita Karani Mudra, and the three bandhas slash mudra. And the combination of all of this, what we call the Mahabandha, yeah, the Tribandha, so Udhyana Bandha, uh, Mula Bandha, Udhyana Bandha in the corner, Jalandhava Bandha, and then when you combine them all together, yeah, in one technique, in equal in term or intensity, that's what we call the Mahabandha. Yeah, I've given a tutorial about the Mahabandha as well, so you may have a look at that. Now, the ultimate of all the bandhas or all the mudras in Hatha Yoga is what we call the Kachari Mudra. The Kachari Mudra, um, although uh, physically it's uh, easy to learn, it's really easy to learn. Yeah. Um, the the uh, deep essence of this mudra happens you know, through practice. Yeah, practice not of the physical technique, but the practice itself. Because the Kachari Mudra, for us to appreciate its essence, we have to learn and then feel and then develop all the other ones along the way as well. All right, so this is now the culmination. Yeah, so there's no point of learning Kachari Mudra if you're not feeling your internal bandhas yet. There's no point of practicing the Kachari Mudra if, for example, <laughs> you're not practicing asana, or you're not practicing pranayama, yeah, you, you lack the internal and the external awareness. Because when you do the Kachari Mudra, so I can um, demonstrate it to you. It's, yeah, when you allow the, the tongue, to enter the, the uvula, and then once it's there, that's where you're gonna use those internal mechanisms in channeling the energy. Yes, the tongue has a direct connection to all the body parts in the body. Really, really, I'm not making this up. When I practice my uh, asana, I use my tongue in decompressing and releasing stagnation in the body. I even use my tongue in lifting myself up <laughs> when I do my handstand, when I do my back bends, everything which requires um, openness and space, yeah, and then to be able for you to lift your energetic sensations up, that's the goal of the tongue. The tongue is really a powerful yeah, anatomical structure. Once, only if we've developed the lower observances as stated. Good. And then the Kachari Mudra, I could talk about mudras and bandhas under the sun without me <laughs> preparing the script because I'm just relating this to you in a real life sense as I feel it, as I experienced it. Yeah. Uh, it's good to, write, to read and study books, but, well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not that type of person. Yes, I read, I study books, but uh, it happens to me first before I knew about them. Now, Kachari Mudra itself is a complete technique on its own. So that's the reward of our uh, hard work, so to speak. Yeah. So yes, um, you will just be doing some asana here and there and pranayama, uh, but it's a complete one on its own. You can do Kachari Mudra while you're doing your Nadi Shodhana. You can do your Kachari Mudra while you are what? You are practicing your meditation before your meditation because it could be a tool in releasing internal blockages of the energetic body. So yes, yeah. And then after the Mudra, we perform the seemingly easiest task, which is stillness and silence, which yeah, is the culmination of the Hatha Yoga discipline. Open the body, open the breath, channel the energy, and wait for the grace to come. I'll see you in the next one and have a lovely meditation practice. Yeah. Namaste. Bye bye.